So apparently AI is killing the American power grade? OpenAI and Duke University are figuring out how AI can mimic human ethics decisions in a TV that can give you recipes for meals that you see in shows and movies. All that and more is coming up right now. XAI announced that Grok, their AI assistant, is now free for all users. You used to have to pay to get it, get the little checkbox beside your name, but now, no matter what your membership status is, Grok's is there for you to use. Given how long AI has already been out, uh, I'd be surprised that if any like power user would have not already purchased it by now, right? I would say this is pretty much for the late adopters or super casual users, right? So, I mean, GPT has a, a free version, right? And um, with X having a free version there, I think this is more of just a way to try and get people to stay on the X platform itself. That's got triple the speed, improved accuracy, and better multilingual support. So it's now got features including web search, citations, a new Aurora image generator for photorealistic images. I've tried it a lot myself. Uh, let's have a whole other conversation about the ins and outs of that, really fun to use. Now, premium users are gonna enjoy higher usage limits and early access to future capabilities. Uh, XAI announced the Grok button for contextual insights. Have you seen that at the top of people's profiles? They've also released their new API models and reduced pricing. By integrating these advanced AI tools, XAI wants to strengthen user engagement and expand their market presence. It's getting hot again in the social media space. Read all about it on the Wednesday I page right now. OpenAI, they've got a paid tier called ChatGPT Pro. It's priced at $200 a month. A lot of people signed up for it just to get access to Sora's top level capabilities. Well now OpenAI has come out and said that they're incurring higher operational costs than anticipated, leading to financial losses for the company. So the CEO, Sam Altman, he came out and actually said, yeah, people are using it way more than we thought they would. First thing, this doesn't seem like the type of model that is going to be like the day-to-day -day model. E.g., you wake up, you go to chatgpt.com, you have it in a separate tab, and you're talking to it. And the reason why is that the outputs take a long time. But that leads me to situation two here, where I do see O1 Pro mode having the potential to actually be worth its price. I think you shouldn't be using this model from the perspective of ground zero when building towards stuff. For example, writing a book or coding out an entire new software, this doesn't really fit that use case. Where I can see this shine though, is that you're already halfway through the book or you already built out that software. This could definitely shine in just building out either more features for your software or writing more chapters for your book with all that additional context. So even though $200 a month sounds like a lot, the advanced computational resources required to support ChatGPT Pro are outpacing that revenue that they're bringing in. So they've got challenges to their profitability goals. Fun story to follow, as are all things OpenAI. Get up to date on the Wednesday I page right now. Now here's one from the I'm sure it's nothing department. Sticking with OpenAI for a moment, they've awarded a $1 million grant to Duke University's Moral Attitudes and Decisions Lab to develop AI algorithms capable of predicting human moral judgments. So this initiative is being led by ethics professor Walter Sinnott Armstrong and co-investigator Yana Scheiborg. The Making Moral AI project aims to create a moral GPS to guide ethical decision making across various fields, including medicine, law, and business. Their mission to create a moral GPS for AI, a guiding system that can navigate the complex landscape of ethical decision making. This technology aims to guide artificial intelligence in making ethical decisions, ensuring that machines act in ways that align with human values. But can we truly program morality into machines? Can algorithms be trusted to make the right choices? The stakes are high, potentially reshaping our world and the way we interact with technology on a fundamental level. So one of the interesting points to glean from this is how it underscores the tech industry's recognition of the importance of integrating ethical considerations into AI development. This is gonna be a fascinating story to watch. We'll keep our eye on it for you, so stay tuned. So back in 2023, in AI world, that's ancient history. Back when we were just starting to get our hands on chat bots and image generators, and my phone needs to stop making the noise that it's making. 
there was a growing swell of an anti-AI movement of people saying, hey, 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 this could get out of hand real quick. Let's maybe watch out about this. Watch how fast we're going with it. Let's think this through. So it turns out now we're finding out the Silicon Valley, that is to say the tech industry at large, effectively quashed the AI doom movement, dismissing concerns about artificial intelligence existential risks. So you prominent figures like Meta's Jan LeCun and AI pioneer Jürgen Schmiduber, Jürgen that's the real name, they publicly downplayed fears of AI-induced human extinction, labeling such worries as overblown. So this was pushback that marginalized AI safety advocates, leading to de ah, decreased funding and attention for AI risk research. So consequently, the tech industry continued its rapid AI advancements with minimal regulatory oversight, which we keep reporting on a lot of people now are saying is a problem. They prioritize innovation over precaution, some say. So here's a scenario that underscores the tech industry's influence in shaping AI narratives beyond the tech prioritizing rapid development and other considerations. Again, more stories that are absolutely fascinating around the world that AI is in, the culture around it. We're going to keep our eye on all of it. So stay tuned week by week to follow along. Now, I was by the water cooler at the production office the other day and found myself having a conversation about how you have all these companies been talking for years about reducing their carbon footprint, trying to make less of an environmental impact, and limiting energy consumption has been one humongous rallying cry the world over about how to meet these goals. Then they had this thing that we're all seeing as the AI gold rush, and all these companies are now in a pickle because they want to develop AI as rapidly as they can, even though the power consumption is kind of putting those plans about their carbon footprint out the window. To wit, AI data centers, we're finding out now, are significantly impacting the U.S. power grid, consuming vast amounts of electricity and distorting power quality. The energy requirements of these data centers are expected to account for nearly 9% of U.S. electricity consumption by 2030. Already in six states, those energy demands take up over 10% of total power consumption. Virginia is the national leader, with more than a quarter of its electricity going towards power data centers. Electricity requests from new facilities can be equivalent to more energy than what's needed for the entire city of San Francisco. And in Ohio, they're anticipating an increase of three New York cities worth of power. So is it's a reporting issue or is it a filtering issue? No, I suspect this is an issue. If you can warn the grid that you're about to increase yeah. consumption, you know what your real-time consumption is, the grid can can respond. Right. But like I said, it's no, this is a normal industrial problem. Major power consumers re normally report into the grid when they're going to increase their demand meaningfully. And the idea that we now have enough data centers that run in the megawatt class, like they, they should qualify, right. should be getting into that reporting mechanism. So that, that will come. But again, it's like the relationship between the tech giants and the power industry is about to get really convoluted if they start producing their own power as well. So a Bloomberg analysis found that over 75% of highly distorted power readings occurred near major data center activities. So these centers require three to five times more power than other facilities, stressing the grid and potentially causing issues like electronics overheating and house fires. Major tech companies, including Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, are investing billions to expand their AI and data center capabilities, with some exploring nuclear power to meet energy demands. Changing the world in huge ways, both small and large, and we're following it all, but you want to get the inside scoop, get over and check out the links on the Wednesday I page right now. As I record this, the Consumer Electronics Show is going on right now where they show off all the interesting and fun consumer tech that's coming out in the next 12 months. A lot of people look forward to the show. We'll have a recap for you of all the big announcements related to AI next week. But early in the show, we had a little preview with the announcement of Samsung's 2025 TV lineup. Okay, so they're bringing out a feature called Vision AI. It's going to be a suite of AI-powered features designed to enhance the user experience. Now, the one that everybody's taking note of is one called Samsung Food, where it can recognize dishes displayed on screen and provide recipes, allowing viewers to recreate meals from their favorite shows. Additionally, there's a click to search function that lets users identify actors, filming locations, and clothing featured in whatever scene with a single click. 
So these innovations, they're aiming to make content interaction more seamless and informative for viewers and, of course, as always, people who glued to their Samsung devices. Fun stuff coming out of CES. Read about the TVs through the links on the Wednesday Eye page right now and stay tuned till next week for all of the cool stuff that came out of CES. Wrapping things up, as always, with the videos of the week. We got some great ones for you now. Have you ever wondered what would happen? What would be the protocol if you were at work and there was a vat of acid that your coworkers were falling into? Well, we're going to answer all of those questions with A Vat of Acid by Jay Kingsley. He was so busy looking at a weekly expense report that he didn't notice the giant vat of acid on the way to his next meeting which was about project updates on the new vat of acid we recently installed. The new guy starts next week, and he's got some big shoes to fill. Someone told the media about the acid accident, and our PR rep had to talk to them. She looked sad, in a professional way, and said that the company would implement rules about walking and reading weekly expense reports, and that our thoughts and prayers are with his family. And it was all just a really unfortunate accident. Hollywood is cooked, absolutely cooked. How long are we into the AI video revolution and we're already making stuff that looks like Newton's Cradle, this sci-fi epic by Jeff Synthesized? Enough. Your defiance is a predictable anomaly. I've seen it before and I'll see it again. Now, you want. AI can do dystopian sci-fi, it can do action, and now you're seeing it do epic medieval martial arts period piece with The Warrior's Way by Cavan. The Warrior's Path demands both steel and spirit. And finally, is this, could it be, the first AI-generated Broadway musical? This is a, a good runner for that title. It's I'm AI Baby by Eric Kerr. Hi, Rob. Good to see you. Hi, Tiffany. It's a good day to sing and dance. Hey Rob, how are you feeling today? I'm sorry, but you need to buy more credits if you want an answer. Just joking, of course I'm fine! You know what, I've been thinking, and I've got to tell you something. What's on your mind, Robbie? Oh, in a world that's digital, with data all around, I'm here to tell you what I've found. With ones and zeros, I've got pizzazz, I'm AI baby, and I've got jazz. That's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year. Welcome back. I hope you're as excited as we are to dive into 2025. Not only the technological innovations that are going to blow our minds, whatever they are, but also how AI continues to shape the culture and the world around us. We're going to cover it all for you. So stay tuned. Keep watching. Stay subscribed. And if you're working on something cool in AI or you got a tip, something we just got to talk about here on the show, send us the link. We're on X, Instagram. LinkedIn, leave a comment on YouTube or wherever you're watching it, or better yet, write your own AI generated Broadway musical and perform it for all of us. La da 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 da. See you next time.